Welcome everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so welcome to the Grass Library. My name is Christina Olorunda. I am the chair of the Loudoun County Social Library Board of Trustees. And it's my pleasure to welcome you today to the One Book, One Community program for Loudoun County Public Library. This is our 20th year for our One Book, One Community Reading, which was funded by a generous gift from former Loudoun resident Erwin Uran with the stipulation that funds from his gift should be used to help bridge understanding among people. So today we will hear from author and former Loudoun resident Sydney Dunlap about her book, It Happened on Saturday, which was selected as this year's one book title. After her presentation, we will take questions from the audience and then we will host book signings by Sydney. As a reminder for those of you who were not able to get a actual physical copy. It is still available um, on the LCPL Libby app, so you can still go to that. So please read it if you have not. Um, now it is my pleasure to introduce to you Town of Leesburg Police Lieutenant John Mosello. Lieutenant Mosello has been a law enforcement officer in the Commonwealth of Virginia since 2007. He is a seasoned investigator and leader with experience spanning all types of investigations including crimes against persons, narcotics, sex crimes, juvenile crimes, and human trafficking. And he served as a consultant on this book. He is here to tell us a little bit more about his perspectives on this book's themes of internet safety and human trafficking, and then he will introduce the city. So let's please welcome Lieutenant Mosella. How's everyone doing today? Good. So thank you. I'm very excited. I keep dropping my paper, but very excited that everyone has me here and invited me. I'm super excited for Sydney, um, who I met a couple of years ago just off a random phone call, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But I just want to kind of explain how important online safety, internet safety is, what the Leesburg Police Department does um, to enhance that for our community. Um, first. We have a detective that's assigned to the Northern Virginia Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. He's also assigned to the FBI's task force um, on child exploitation. Um, and that is one of his main functions with our police department, is to ensure crimes like this get investigated and we reach a logical conclusion um, for that type of crime. You know, DOJ said in like 2022, 2023, that there was reported, and this is just one category of these types of crime and the extortions, um, and particularly sex, sex extortion type cases, that there were over 7,000 reports. And remember that, reports, all right? That means that number's a little bit higher, that equated about 3,000 victims. So that's across our country, right? We see that every, we see that very often here in our communities. We take those very seriously. You know, whether it is a traditional type of extortion, where they are soliciting, say, a photograph, and then say, hey, we're gonna send this out if you don't give us more photographs, or it's more financial. Hey, uh, a photograph sent, what shouldn't have been sent, and then they're like, hey, give us this much money, or we're gonna send that out. It is something that, unfortunately, we're seeing far too often, and we don't want, we don't want to see that anymore. Um, Loudon takes it very seriously. If you just look at some of the headlines that we've seen in September of this year, um, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office released the press release that was that a man from Sterling got two years um, for a sex extortion case, and that just recently, um, as of a few a uh, few weeks ago, excuse me, or actually earlier this week, um, there was a Maryland man that was charged here in Loudon. Now that was not by the police department; that was by the sheriff's office. But just as a perusal of the headlines of what we see globally. Um, parents that are in the room, one of the things I can't emphasize more and more is, you know, being involved in your child's life, being involved in the electronic devices that they're using, the apps that they're on. It is our responsibility as a parent to make sure we know what they're doing. Um, there are so many dangers that are potentially out there, whether that is from conversations, the extortions, drug purchases, that all happen electronically. We see it in every community across our nation and in our community, and we're trying very hard to combat that. Um, that's probably enough preaching, because I don't want to steal anything from Sydney, 
But I, I do want to say I was very honored by Sydney. Um, you know, it was really all on her. She kind of was researching her, her book, and she's going to tell you this story. And she just kind of made a phone call to us. And she, I, I got linked up with her, and we had a, just a great conversation. Um, and I was very happy to have that point in the right direction. And she just rolled with it. And it was a, I was so excited. A couple years later, she called me out of the blue and was like, hey, I'm getting published. And I was like, like, how amazing is that? And I'm so privileged to be able to introduce her today so she can present stuff to you. So let me go ahead, and I'm just going to read this so I don't, don't mess anything up. But Sydney Dunlap is a former elementary school teacher who's worked with at-risk youth in a variety of settings, including at Loudoun County Public Schools, where she worked for over 17 years at Meadowland, Sicklin Creek, and Evergreen Mill Elementary School. Sydney also served for two years as a community educator for a nonprofit organization that works to free youth from trafficking. In writing her debut novel, It Happened on Saturday, Sydney also consulted with the Town of Leesburg Police Department on how cases related to internet safety and human trafficking would be handled by law enforcement. As seen in, as seen in It Happened on Saturday, she enjoys writing heartfelt, hopeful fiction that expands young readers' awareness of tough topics. She is a member of the Society of Children Book Writers and Illustrators, is a published poet, and has also written for a newspaper. Just last month, it happened on Saturday, was awarded the gold medal in the category of preteen fiction, mature issues, in the Moonbeam Children's Book Awards. Uh, without further ado, Sydney Dunlap. So it's actually 500 million. Wow. Yeah. 
Uh, the next one, of all those 500 million and probably more now since the study was done, 8% um, of those accounts are actually fake where somebody is trying to deceive someone else uh, for whatever purpose they might have that they are not just like me having a fun account to share with you know, my friends, pictures of my pets or whatever. Um, they're, they're fake for, for some reason. Okay, according, according to the study, 8% at that time, again, this could have changed, it could be it could be a little bit more, who knows, but it was 8% at that time. Yeah. Okay, the, the last question I'm gonna ask you is, catfisher is a term for somebody who is trying to deceive someone on social media and they're, they have uh, some sort of purpose that is not good, and that's what we call them. So that's, that's a word that a lot of, of people have heard. Okay, so knowing that this is all such a big part of life, and as I said, it isn't going anywhere, um, I, was, I really thought that it might be an important thing to address in a story. And I'll tell you a little bit about the background of the book now. So as you heard, I was a teacher in Loudoun for a long time. And when I was working at Sibling Creek, which is the last school where I taught, uh, one night before I went to sleep, I was just flipping channels, and I saw a movie that had kids hardly older than my students, who were eight and nine years old, um, being screamed at it and shoved into a van, and I did not know what that was, and I was very, very disturbed by it. So I kept watching to the very end, and just to see what it was, and I found out it was a, based on a real story about trafficking, and I decided to research that and learn more about it and ask questions, um, because if something like that was going on while I was in the world, I, I wanted to get involved in it, which just seemed like a really horrible thing. So um, soon after that, my husband was transferred down to Houston for his work, and we ended up moving, and instead of getting um, into the school system there and working you know, full-time teaching there, I decided I was going to tutor kids part-time so that I would have more time um, of my own that I could get involved as a volunteer and, and fight uh, trafficking of children. And Houston is a transportation hub, and it's, it's an area that's known for that being a, a very big, big issue. So it happens it happened everywhere, but Houston, had lots of organizations where I could get involved right away and just start helping with fundraising and with events. And then I ended up working with a group called Traffic 911. They um, had me as a volunteer community outreach leader for two years. And I worked to educate people about trafficking and about staying safe. And I also went into juvenile detention there and talked with kids who were especially high risk and shared a program of trafficking awareness and prevention with them. And at the same time I was doing this, a 12 year old girl in my suburb was, I found out, uh, was talking to someone online. Uh, she was a soccer player and she was sharing pictures and the other person was sharing all these pictures of supposedly of themselves playing soccer and they, they were just really connecting over their love of sports. And they were talking a lot and sharing all these confidences. And the girl decided that uh, sh they should meet and they were just talking about we should really get together at the park and you know, get the soccer ball around. And so they had this meeting and the one girl when she was dropped off, it was just a second after her parents left that it was actually, it turned out to be a 40 year old man who she had been talking to the whole time. And I think when you think of somebody sharing pictures of themselves, you think, well, that's them, right? That there's their pictures. How did, how did they get all these pictures? Well, people can say anything online, right? They can pretend to be whoever they want online. But this girl was just unsuspecting, didn't know, and she was abducted. And I will say that um, I just want to always let the audience know she did. They put out Amber Alerts, and she was returned safely to her family, but it was a very terrible experience she went through and it was just because she didn't know and she trusted this person to be who they said they were online 
So when I learned all of this, I also found out that 65% of the known trafficking cases that have happened in the most recent year where we have data did originate online. So I decided that it's time to write a book about this to try to get the word out to kids and to parents and to teachers and really to everybody about how easily this can happen and about this, this threat that is out there. Because social media can be a lot of fun and it can be great. It can be you know a positive thing in your life, but it can also be dangerous. And that's why people just need to know uh, red flags. They, they need to know how to use social media safely and they need to know things that would be warning signs and, and some rules to follow so that they can use it safely. So that's why I decided to write about um, a girl named Julia and she, how many of you have already read the book? I should actually ask me why. Okay, so we've got some, okay, a nice mix. So I'll tell you some, some things, but not too much, not too many spoilers. So, but Julia is uh, 13 years old, and she's getting ready to start eighth grade. And it's the summer before eighth grade. And she loves horses, and she loves helping out at the rescue barn. And she's excited when the book first starts because her best friend has been away at camp all summer, and she, this is the first time they're going to see each other in a while because it was one of those camps where you couldn't have technology, so they weren't able to communicate. So when her friend uh, gets there to help her out at the rescue barn, Julia finds out some not great news for her that her friend has met this boy and she's kind of distracted with him and so she can't even stay very long. She's got she's meeting him later. So Julia thought they had all these uh, plans together, but her friend is like, yeah, I wanted to see you, but I also want to see him. And she kind of dashes off and leaves Julia feeling kind of left out and disappointed. Um, they were in a group of four, uh, four girls that hung out together a lot and the other two were twins and um, their mom got transferred, so they're now not in the area. So Julia's kind of in a tough spot because she's starting eighth grade and two of her friends are living across the country and the other one is really kind of distracted. So she's, she's not feeling so good and her sister is older than her. How many uh, kids in here have an older sister? Okay, so I was, I was, I had an older sibling, and I remember when she started driving, and then she got this job at the mall, and she was gone all the time because she was, you know, working and had a, you know, had a place to go and, and could drive anywhere. So if you're the kid that is younger, that can be a little bit hard sometimes because you're like, oh, okay, well I'm here still, and I think that's sort of how Julie is feeling with her sister, you know, getting her driver's license, and so it's, it's kind of lonely, and her parents are really busy at work, and so she gets to have a makeover with her older sister just when she finally has a little time to spare for Julia and Julia posts a picture online and that's when she hears from Tyler and that's what he that's kind of what he says when he contacts her and then he's kind of complimenting her and Julia is feeling like, well, here's somebody who really wants to talk to me. Everyone else is too busy for me right now. She knows she really shouldn't talk to him, and she doesn't at first. But then time passes. She and her friend kind of get into a bit of a bigger problem with each other, a bit of an argument, and she's feeling even more lonely, a little bit more left out. And eventually he keeps persisting, and he keeps reaching out to her. So eventually she does talk to him, and I don't want to say too much about the book for those who haven't read it yet, but she finds out he is not who he said he was. And she gets into a very dangerous situation. Uh, and she does have to escape, which she, she's able to escape. Um, the second half of the book is all about how she recovers from that and how it impacted her family and her friends. And she learns a lot about helping herself through a difficult time and what you can do um, if you've been through something really hard. And the book really does end on a note of hope um, and a note of, of positivity that you can go through a really hard time and you can come out on the other side of it and it, you can be okay. So the book does have a happy, uh, everything's not completely resolved, like this is still gonna throw things at her, but she's got some tools now that she 
she's grown a lot as a person. And the next thing I want to talk about is to get back to social media. And I'm going to ask you to interact again a little bit with a true or a false or a thumbs up or a thumbs down about if something would be okay to do online or if something might not be the best idea. And the first one I'm going to ask you about is just commenting on a friend's post, as long as it's something, you know, something nice that you can find someone saying to you. What do we say? That's fine, right? That's, that's what social media is for. We can share pictures, we can share experiences, like when someone travels and, and has really cool pictures, it's like you didn't get to go there, but you got to see it, maybe you can go one day. So it can be really fun. And again, those animal pictures are great, right? So there's lots of positive things we can comment on and we can enjoy on social media. What about if somebody um, is posting something online, assuming that, that they are the person in the pictures if they say they are? Is that yes or no? Thumbs up or thumbs down? And mm -hmm. we're going to put our thumbs down, and this goes back to the story about the 12-year-old that I um, told you about before who saw all those pictures of the girl playing soccer and thought that's who it was, but it wasn't. People can get pictures. Um, there's lots of places you can get pictures that aren't you. Um, assuming that somebody you're talking to when they when they say things is, is telling you the truth. No, there's there's a lot of people out there that are going to say whatever they think they need to say to get your attention, um, and to get you to trust them, even though it could be very very far from the truth. Okay, what about if somebody says, "I'm getting ready to film a music video, and you look just right. I think I, I'd love to have you in it, or um, I think you'd be really good. Um, we're looking for." For people to be in a movie, and we think you'd be really good, you look just the right part. Because you do hear about people at the mall or something getting discovered, right? You hear about that. But if somebody says that, and you think, oh my gosh, I'm getting discovered, right? Well, they they don't go straight to your parents, right? They want to talk to you about it. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Huge thumbs down, okay? Huge thumbs down. Because if there's anything like that that's real, that's actually legitimate, because you know that does actually happen sometimes, it's going to be through your parents, right? So kids in the room, you're under 18, nobody can contact you and try to get you involved in something like that without reaching out to your parents. They would sign contracts and all of that would be done. Nothing between just you and them, okay? So if they say that, don't think, oh my gosh, we didn't discover Think, okay, this person is, is probably up to no good and I will not be with them. Always, always parents have to be involved. And along those same lines, what about if somebody says, like what Tyler uh, said to Julia in the book, I don't think you're, you should tell your parents about me. Let's keep this relationship a secret because I don't want you to get in trouble. And it's probably better if you know your parents might think I'm too old or your parents might you know, not know, know me, so they might not want you hanging out with me. And they try to make excuses why they shouldn't meet your parents, meet your family. What do you think? Thumbs up. Yeah, that is a huge red flag also because the whole idea, if something is above board and something is okay, there's no reason your parents shouldn't know about it. Your parents need to know who you're hanging out with, right? And who you're talking to, and they need to, to say that it's okay. Because that's how Julie got the trouble. She wasn't specifically looking for trouble. She truly did not realize, but she kept this from her parents. And that's what put her in a situation that could have been really horrible. She, as, as I said, she did get away, but it put her in a very dangerous position because she was thinking, oh, well, I don't think my parents would probably approve of this, so I'm just not going to say anything. But there was a reason. Okay, next one. Um, what about just sending a DM to a kid you've never really talked to that much at school, but they're in one of your classes, and you'd like to get to know them better? And just sending them a message, like maybe about the math homework or something, if you have a question on the math homework. That's fine, that's a way you can get to know people. If this is a real person that you have a connection with in real life, and say you, you, know, you do have a math assignment, you weren't sure what page it was or something, absolutely fine, and then maybe it could be the start of a friendship. So social media can be really good, but we just have to think carefully about how we're using it. Okay, the next one would be um, communicating with someone online that you don't have any connections like that with in real life. 
like no connections at all. Yeah, that's a big thumbs down. That's a huge red flag for somebody who is up to no good. If they're trying to communicate with you and you really are not connected with them at all. Okay, the next one, if you're gaming, how many people out here like to game? Okay, and that's a popular thing to do and it can be a lot of fun and it can be a great way to kind of relax and just have some, some downtime and enjoy yourself. But if you're gaming and someone is trying to talk to you and trying to ask you questions, you might be thinking about the game and thinking about whatever's going on on the screen and not really concentrating and they start asking you questions. Should you answer questions and, and let them know anything about you? Absolutely not. That's how, uh, from what I've heard, kind of the newest thing that's happening as far as how people are getting information when someone's distracted playing the game and just kind of starting to find out about them and get some information that they shouldn't be having but it's not for them to know. Okay, what about sending a message to somebody in a DM or, or in a text um, that you would not want up here for all these people to see or that you would not want on the news or that you would not want on your school's bulletin board or wherever information gets posted? What about a picture? that you think is just between you and somebody else, and it's fine for them to see it, but you would not want it on your family hall anymore. What do you think? Yes, anything like that is a big thumbs down because some people might say, oh, but it's just between my friend and me, it's fine, They're, I trust them. Well, relationships can change, and they may decide they do want to share it, or maybe they really are serious, they would never show anybody, but somebody else gets a hold of their phone or their device, Somebody else could, could find it and they could leave it down or, you know, whatever. All it takes is about two seconds, right, for something to be out there. So anything you post electronically, whether it's a picture or just words that you say, unless you're okay with everybody associating that comment with you or everybody seeing that picture, you don't send it electronically, right? Because it could get all over the world in a matter of seconds. So those are... Um, those are a few things I wanted to make sure we talked about, and I always put these on as well to make sure I didn't forget anything. Got that one. And we do want our settings to be private, right? And why do we not want to post our exact location? What do you think? Yes. Yeah, you don't want to post your exact location. Yeah, what about if you and your friends hang out a certain place all the time and you and you post the location of it? What do you think? What do you say? She didn't want her friends going either. 
but they were saying, oh, come on, you're being silly, you're being ridiculous, let's just go, it'll, it'll be fine. And she stood up to her friends, and she said, no, we're leaving, and we're leaving now, and she made them all leave, and she was very strong, which is hard to do, especially when it was her against two other people, right? But she did, and they left, and they were kind of annoyed with her, but they left, and then they later find out, found out that the situation was very dangerous. They found out actually who those people were, and it would have potentially been an abduction situation for them. So she very well may have saved all of their lives by standing up to her friends and not just giving in because they were they were saying, oh, you're being silly. So that is why we have to trust ourselves and trust our intuition because it really can save your life. So it's very important to remember that. And then we talked about this one as well. Um, the other part of the book in the second half, uh, for those of you who've read it, the counseling group that Julie is in, um, we, we do get into um, ways to help yourself through a hard time. Because our world is so stressful, and honestly, I feel like I've been in the world a long time, and I've never seen so much going on that's just so, so difficult to know that these, these things are happening in just so many areas of our world. Just so much going on, and it's just stressful, I think. Being on this planet right now is very stressful for everybody. So we have to help ourselves because we can still have, you know, we can still have good lives, I, I think, right now, but we have to figure out ways to help ourselves through the stress because I think I think stress is just going to be there for all of us. And um, some of the things they talk about in Julia's counseling group, um, exercise, how many like to exercise in here? Yeah. So there's ways that it can really help, right? You exercise and you just feel so much more relaxed and it can really help your body to calm down and if your body calms down, it can then help your brain to calm down. Um, what about nature? Like getting outside. I always think if you're outside and you're under the sky, it's so much fun to look at the clouds and just think how far away they are and, and find things in the clouds. And then at night, just looking at the stars and just thinking how much bigger everything is there and that there's this whole universe and we're just down here and small and it, it just kind of makes things I think get into perspective sometimes when we look at this night sky and animals we talked about animal lovers right your dog is always glad to see you right or your cat or yeah anyone else have an unusual pet there was someone I was talking to yesterday who had a I think it was a parrot yeah and someone else had a ferret in the same group so yeah so dogs cats uh, horses all kinds of animals can be great what about just talking to, do any of you guys in here like to talk to your friends when you have um, something going on? Sometimes just sharing it with somebody and getting it out in the open makes you feel a lot better. And that's something that Julia learns about too, that it is great to talk to your friends and to share. And if they're really your friends, they're gonna be there for you. Even if you feel embarrassed or you feel like, I don't think I want people to know this about me. If it's really your friend, you know, you can talk to them and they'll, they'll be there for you. And what about creativity? Anybody, any creatives out here? So there's so many kinds of creativity. I was talking with some kids yesterday about different kinds of, of creativity, and there was um, somebody who does like folded paper and makes art out of folded paper, and it was really cool to hear what he was, um, what he was describing. Anybody out here want to share how you're creative? Yes. that we are all obviously doing, I mean, when sitting here, 
but breathing, if you do it very consciously to calm yourself, if you're stressed, it can be really good. If you breathe just from down here, um, from deep down, and you can take a really long breath, and then you can hold it, and then you can let it out for about twice as long as you were inhaling. That's a way, if you do that just a few times, it can really calm your whole system down. It's like a way, even if you know there's something going on and you're really stressed out, if you can do that breathing, it's it's a way of just letting your your body calm down and feel like, okay, everything's okay. And it's, it's really helpful. So those are some of the things um, when I was writing the book, I didn't want it to just be about Julia gets in this dangerous situation and she gets out and I want people to know about that. I also wanted to go a little deeper and go into recovery. And as I said, I think all of us, you know, experience traumas in our lives and, and difficult times. So how can we help ourselves? So that's why I wanted that whole second half of the book to address all of those things that I think are relevant to just anybody right now because there is a lot of stress. Um, so that is what I wanted to share about the book. And I have a little bit more information just about uh, trafficking that I'll let you read. Can everyone see in the back? So 17,200 reports in um, 2021 from all 50 states, rural areas, and urban areas is a lot. And I think that's, again, why people need to know about this. And I, I shared this uh, statistic before about why social media is, I think, such an important thing for us to be talking about, how it can be used safely and maybe things we shouldn't do. And trafficking can happen to anybody in any situation. Um, there are some factors that do increase the vulnerability that I'll just let you read.
that you really like to do just for fun, and sometimes it can turn into something a lot bigger. And I, especially all the young people in here, just think about things you really enjoy and things that you feel like are just maybe maybe a little bit unique to you, because sometimes that can be a sign of, of something you might be meant to do in your life. And this for me, uh, I remember this day very specifically, even though it was a really long time ago, um, we had had a very, very cold winter. I grew up in Maryland, and we used to get a big snowstorm every winter, which I loved. How many like to play in the snow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. I did too. We had a great, a great snowy winter, but then anybody ever get kind of sick of it after a while where you're like, for spring, and just like, okay, I'm done, I've had enough cold. I used to, yeah, a lot of people want the, you know, want the snow to come. Well, I was ready for the spring. And I went outside one day, and it's just been really cold for a while. And it was finally, the flowers were starting to bloom. We had tulips in our yard, and the birds were singing. And it was just a gorgeous day. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's here. Spring is here. I, I can wear short sleeves again, and I can you know, go outside and, and just run around in the grass. There's no snow. So I was really excited. And um, I wrote a poem. Someone had given me a journal, and I decided to write um, a poem about it. I don't, it's in my, um, Third grade cursives, <laughs> not the best writing, but um, I, can, I mean I can read it if I don't if you'd like to hear it. It's, Spring is here, the world is new, and on the grass there is some dew. If you look up in the sky, you'll see some pretty cardinals flying. So that was that was my little poem, and there was just something though about it that after I wrote it, I was proud of it, and I just it just kind of expressed what I was feeling in that moment in a way that I could come back to and. Here it is all these years later, and I, I can still come back to how I felt that day and still remember it. So I just like to share that. And um, any any kids in here, do you have something you really like to do that's kind of special like that? Anybody have any, any special hobbies or anything they want to share? Yes.